hysterectomy, wall prolapse, part 1, RCG guideline. Now, diagnosis and investigation. What is the preferred classification system for vault or pelvic organ prolapse? About this, it's written that there should be a standardized classification system. Okay, standardized classification system should be used. Standardized classification system should be used for the assessment and documentation of pelvic organ prolapse, including the wall prolapse. Now, when is urodynamic testing required? Routine urodynamic testing not required. We should remember this. In what setting should a patient with a post hysterectomy wall prolapse be assessed? We can't assess it in every setting. There should be multidisciplinary team approach for that. Clinicians should work as a part of pelvic floor muscle, uh, pelvic floor multidisciplinary team according to the new 2015 guideline. And our quality of life QL measures of any value. Standardized tool for quality of life assessment should be used. Patient assessment should be addressed, should address quality of life issues using standardized tools. That is important. Prevention. What preventive techniques are of value at hysterectomy? There are different techniques. Three of them are very important. First of all, McCall called duplasty at the time of vaginal hysterectomy is effective in preventing subsequent post hysterectomy wall prolapse. McCall called duplasty, the first preventive technique. Secondly, suturing the cardinal and uterosacral ligaments to the vaginal cuff at the time of hysterectomy is effective in preventing post-hysterectomy wall prolapse, both abdominal and vaginal hysterectomy. Okay, suturing the cardinal and uterosacral ligament, you can see from this figure. Now, sacrospinous fixation, the third technique at the time of vaginal hysterectomy should be considered when the wall descends into the intritus during closure sacrospinous fixation a very important technique you can see from this figure now does sub subtotal hysterectomy have any place in the prevention of post hysterectomy wall prolapse about this it's written that no rule of in post hysterectomy wall prolapse okay so what do guidelines say subtotal hysterectomy is not recommended for the prevention of post hysterectomy vault prolapse or their preferred suture material of uh, for vault support at the time of hysterectomy is there any role of suture material okay suture material is questionable that is the important thing there is inadequate and conflicting evidence over the use of the permanent suture in the short term and no evidence in the long term they are associated that they are associated with the high okay conservative manner Myers is pelvic floor therapy of value in the management of the post hysterectomy wall prolapse pelvic floor therapy is questionable is there any role about this it's written that pelvic floor muscle training is an effective treatment option for the woman with a stage one to two vaginal prolapse including post hysterectomy wall prolapse what is the place of vaginal devices okay we have different vaginal devices then a role of that okay about this written that vaginal passeries are an alternative treatment option for women with stage 2 to 4 post destruction for 2 to 4 these are factors now surgical management what are the indications for surgery Okay, before surgery, it's very important that we should do counseling for the patient. So, what does guideline say? Surgical treatment should be offered to the woman with a symptomatic post hysterectomy wall prolapse after appropriate counseling. Now, who should undertake surgery? Who should undertake this surgery? Not everyone can undertake this surgery. There should be a specific person for that. Okay, for that, we should remember. RCOG accredited urogynecologist. 
Post hysterectomy wall prolapse surgery should be performed by an RCOG credit specialist or urogynecologist or gynecologist who can demonstrate a covenant level of training or experience. Now, what is an acceptable successful result after this surgical treatment? That is important. We should know about this. About this, it's written that the patient satisfaction is very important. Patient reported outcome including the patient reported success rate and relief of the presenting symptoms should be the primary assessment outcome including in the new guideline. Okay, so there should be a specific objective cure. Objective cure is important as correlated with the symptoms of vaginal bulge. Okay, pop Q stage 1 or 0 in apical compartment seems to be accepted and widely used. Okay, what are the types? The types of the surgical procedures and remaining part of post hysterectomy wall prolapse guideline is in the part 2. Means the next video will show the part 2 portion of this guideline will be shown in the next video. Okay, and I recommend all of you to open the book.